Hello YouTube, I'm Michael Size and looking at how many decarbonization videos I've made, you might be thinking that climate action is the only thing I care about, but that's not true. I actually have a pretty particular philosophy in this space and I might explain it in more detail in the future, but part of it is that any decarbonization solution, in my opinion, has to either bring the user a financial benefit, or if it fails to do that, it has to bring the user a lifestyle improvement which is meaningful enough that it closes the gap on justifying the investment. But when looking at the conventional heat pumps, or should I say the mainstream heat pumps, they fail miserably miserably at it. And I'm making this video to hate on them and perhaps to offer alternatives. And I'll start with the biggest offender, which is by far air to water heat pumps, particularly those intended for space heating. Now depending on where you are in the world, this might sound a bit weird, so I'll quickly clarify. In the US, a lot of houses use forced air systems for both heating and cooling, and these systems are not important for this video. In most of Europe, however, and I think in most of the world as well, heating is usually done by circulating hot water, usually through radiators. These are known as hydronic systems, and those are the systems that I'll be talking about. If you're trying to upgrade the hydronic system from combustion to a conventional heat pump solution, what's gonna happen is that, first of all, the air to water heat pump, which is needed to heat the circulating water, is going to cost you in excess of $10,000. After that, the contractor is going to convince you that your old radiators are not suitable and upgrading those is going to cost another $10,000 as well and then they're gonna overcharge you on labor and by the time that you've turned your whole house upside down just to accommodate the heat pump upgrade, not only are you going to find that you're on the order of $30,000 or more invested, but you're also going to find that the results of your investment are a total of zero life quality benefits and a total of maybe $200 per year in energy savings. Nowhere near enough to justify the investment. Between the cost and the hassle, this sounds like a terrible option, even if you really care about the climate and even if you're fairly wealthy, but it gets worse. Think about this solution in the limit. What would happen if you wanted to be extremely frugal about it? Is there any hope of turning this profitable? Imagine that you get the heat pump, you somehow install it yourself and you don't touch the radiators, just run with the old stuff. This could drop your cost down to $10,000, but because you're using the old radiators, you can expect to have to run the same supply temperatures which the combustion boiler used to provide and that means that in this scenario, your COP is probably going to be so low that you can expect about zero dollars per year in energy savings. And not only that, but there's also a chance now that during the coldest days of the year, your heating system might not even be able to keep up with the heating requirements. So you risk an actual decrease in life quality. Now it may happen that your radiators are already oversized, perhaps because the heating contractor might have already scammed you when you got the combustion system installed. If that is the case and you go the conventional route, they'll still try to scam you with an upgrade anyway, but if it is the case and you go with the frugal route instead, you might still save $200 per year while also staying properly warm. But the investment is still $10,000, which makes the $200 still not enough to justify it. So personally, I can't come up with any arguments in favor of these heat pumps, but in the case of space heating, I do actually have an alternative to show you, which is at least seven times more attractive than mainstream heat pumps, and that solution is reversible ACs. These devices, also known as air-to-air -air heat pumps, were the topic of my previous video where I explained them in detail, but I'll give you the pitch in this video as well. 
Reversible ACs when running in heating mode have higher efficiency than air to water heat pumps while having a way lower upfront cost at perhaps $2000 per unit labor included and this makes the investment a lot easier to justify. Additionally if you do not currently have AC that makes air to air heat pumps even easier to justify since after all they are reversible ACs so even if you're just getting them for heating you also get the functionality of cooling as well. And because the average cooling demand in Europe is only about 3% of what the heating demand is, assuming that you always heat and cool as necessary, combined with the fact that good reversible ACs reduce carbon emissions by 70% in heating mode compared to a gas boiler, it makes it such that the climate benefit of heating with them is at least 10 times higher than the climate drawback of using them in cooling mode. What I'm trying to say is that not only can you view these devices as free AC, but you can also view them as guilt-free AC. And because these are just mini splits, they also install just like any other mini split. Which is to say that they are standalone, self contained devices, and nothing else in your house needs to change to accommodate them. They also have fairly low electrical power, which means that your existing electrical circuits will be plenty powerful for them. The self contained nature of this solution also nullifies the one and only drawback that these have, which is that they have a minimum operating temperature, usually negative 15 Celsius, though some go as low as negative 25 Celsius. This is a problem for the 6 or so days per year when it is that cold, but unlike with an air to water heat pump, the gas boiler stays in place, so you have a perfect backup for this. This is a cheap, convenient and probably even profitable solution for the decarbonization of space heating and depending on exactly how cold it gets every year, which remember will be less cold going forward, it may be either a complete decarbonization solution or at least a 90-95% solution. But with space heating out of the way, it's now time to move on to the second type of heat pump I hate, which is air to water heat pumps. Wait. Again? Yeah, again. But this time I'm actually talking about heat pump water heaters, the kind that make domestic hot water. Of course, air to water heat pumps designed for space heating are most often configured to make hot water as well, but can also get heat pumps which make only hot water for a lot less money. Now in some cases these heat pumps might actually become profitable, so let's compare them to four of the conventional solutions that you might currently have installed. Resistive electric hot water tank, resistive electric tankless, gas fired hot water tank and gas fired tankless. Firstly on a qualitative basis, because heat pump water heaters are never tankless, this means that when compared to the tankless solutions, not only are you introducing standing losses where there weren't any standing losses before, but it also means that you are giving up on unlimited hot water. Which by the way, infinite hot water is not so that you can take infinitely long showers or whatever, it's there in case you have multiple people all trying to take showers in quick succession. On a quantitative basis, the price of the energy that these devices use I will assume to be 16 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity and 4 cents per kilowatt hour for gas. Which means that, ignoring standing losses, the price of 1 kilowatt hour of heat added to the water is 16 cents for the resistive electric solutions and 5 cents for the gas solutions. Now for a heat pump water heater, assuming a COP of 4, which might be a bit generous, that puts the cost of heat at 4 cents per kilowatt hour. And if we can establish how much money we need to save per year to justify the investment, then we will be able to calculate what our minimum hot water demand needs to be in order to get there. So let's see how much these things cost. If you're gonna choose a reasonably sized, fairly efficient heat pump heater, that's gonna cost about $2000 just for the hardware. And since it is not a drop-in replacement for anything, 
installation could very well be another $500 to $1000. Now I don't know how long these things last, but if the upfront cost approaches $3000 with no lifestyle benefit and possibly a lifestyle detriment, I would definitely want the savings to be at least $500 per year. And for that to be true, your hot water demand would need to be 11.5 kilowatt hours per day if you're currently running a resistive electric solution and an enormous 137 kilowatt hours per day if you're currently running a gas solution. Now a $2000 heat pump water heater cannot produce more than about 80 kilowatt hours of heat per day, so this means that saving money as compared to gas is impossible at these prices. Because anybody who needs that much hot water will also need a much more powerful water heater. But do note that even if the heat pump could make that much hot water, it would probably still be impossible for the vast majority of households because nobody actually needs that much hot water anyway. So a profit compared to gas is out of the question, but what about compared to resistive electric? That one is within the realm of possibility, but it's still a lot higher than what many households use. If on average your city water comes in at 10 degrees Celsius, then you need to heat it by about 35 degrees Celsius, and that works out to right around 4 kilowatt hours of heat per 100 liters of hot water. So that's about 300 liters of hot water per day to break even. For comparison, that's about equal to the total water demand for the house that I'm living in, which houses a total of 3 dwellers. And the hot water demand is probably around half of that. Another way to put it, 100 liters is about one long shower or about two short showers. And while some people are in the two shower per day camp, there are also people that do a two days per shower sort of schedule. So while there are some use cases where the heat pump water heater will be profitable, everyone's gonna have to make that calculation for themselves. Now I said that I would be providing alternatives, and for the space heating I did, but for domestic hot water I only have a partial alternative, and that is installing electric faucets at the sinks. I have a whole video all about these devices, but I want to explain why these things save money on the order of hundreds of dollars per year, despite being resistive electric, and it's all about being appropriately sized for the task. On second thought, the explanation is way too long and nerdy, so I'll type it on screen for the nerds, but in short, traditional faucets have no choice but to waste hot water, so when you switch to these instant faucets, you're replacing around 15 kilowatts of gas with only 3 kilowatts of electricity, and this is while maintaining the same water temperature and the same washing power, only dropping hot water volumes. And this is the solution that I'm currently running electric faucet to the sink and the combi boiler for the showers. I'm paying the lowest hardware cost, the lowest energy cost and I enjoy the luxury of infinite hot water everywhere as well as instant hot water at the sinks. Additionally, because the sinks and showers are now separate systems, that means that anybody messing with the sinks is not able to greatly influence the shower temperature, which wasn't true back when I had the combi boiler feeding both. The electric faucets are low enough power to plug into a regular outlet, which means that they are easy to install DIY. And don't forget that they are saving water as well. All in all, I think this is the best solution that anyone can get, and it is the one I'm recommending. It decreases scope 1 carbon emissions by about 50% in my case, as compared to running everything on gas, so it's nowhere near a complete decarbonization solution, but it is a cheap, profitable and convenient solution. Or it is as long as you have access to natural gas. These have been the heat pumps which I hate, and I hope that after this video, you hate them too. And that's because nothing puts a normie off of decarbonization as hard as telling them that they have to spend $30,000 and see no personal benefit. It's ridiculous and we should stop pushing it. Now I have plans to push even harder on this channel against climate sacrifices, and if you want to be notified about it, the subscribe button is just above the like button. I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.